Shabbat Shalom. The name of this sermon is The Many Meanings of Rav Lach. Rav Lach. But to understand that phrase, we need to, uh, it's, a, it's an answer that God gives to Moshe at the beginning of this week's Parsha, but to understand it, we have to understand why God says it to Moshe. And so, I will explain that the Torah portion begins this week with Moshe saying, Va'et Hanan el Adunai, I pleaded with God at that time to let me enter the land. Moses seems to be asking God if perhaps God did or perhaps would have a change of heart from his decree long ago when Moshe hit the rock and God said to Moshe, you shall not bring this community into the land that I have given them. It is not clear by a tahi at that time when exactly that time was. When did Moshe make that request? In last week's Torah portion, Moshe recalls the victories over the kings of Sichon and Og. And so Rashi explains that, um, at, that Shema Hutar Haneder, that since God and Ruvain and half of the tribe of Minashe were going to settle on the other side of the Jordan where those kings, Og and, and Sihon, lived, that Moshe said, maybe, maybe this is part of the land of Israel over here, and maybe God has, um, has rescinded the decree against me. A Barbanel, my commentator of choice for this year, um, rejects this idea. He says Moshe knows the boundaries of the land of Israel and, uh, and that the boundary is the Jordan River. And so he says, how could Moses think that taking territory on the other side of the Jordan meant that the decree had been resented? Ibn Ezra and Nachmanides say that the phrase ba'etahi refers to the moment that God issued the decree against Moses. Um, and Abar Brunel again rejects this argument, saying, we didn't read anything about that. <laughs> why, is that why wouldn't the Torah at least tell us that like Moses raises his voice about that? We read nothing about that. It's not in the Torah portion. That doesn't make any sense. And so Abar Brunel proposes that when Moses says, I pleaded with God at that time, the phrase refers back to the end of last week's Torah portion. And in case you don't want to open it up and look, I will tell you at the end of last week's Torah portion, Moshe recalls how... Um, the moment when Moses appointed Joshua as the next leader. Um, there is an expression, Yiddish a cup. Um, it literally means the Jewish head. It refers to someone with good problem-solving skills. Um, I'm not sure it exactly applies to what I'm about to say, but according to, according to, according to Barbara Nell, Moses um, said to God, hey, God, your decree, when you gave me that decree, you said, I wouldn't bring the people into the land, but now that Joshua has been appointed, I'm not in the leadership position anymore, so maybe, maybe that means that I could just go. And Abarbanel says something amazing. He imagines that Moshe would go into the land, just sort of like as a regular citizen, right? I'm a regular, ordinary citizen. The Midrash imagines that, uh, that Moshe at that moment, he's just going to go into the land as Joshua's assistant, right? But I'm just going to hang in the background. And now we can return to those words, Rav Lach, that God says to Moses. On the surface, the meaning of Rav Lach there is, it's enough. <laughs> it's enough for you. You've been leader long enough. You appointed Joshua as the next one in charge. Let go. Let go. However, in his commentary this week on the Torah portion, Rabbi David Kosher explains that when, when, God, when Moses hears God say, Rav Lach, um, there are echoes to that phrase. There's, there's a midrash that explains this moment when God hands over leadership. It goes like this. To what is the matter comparable? to a governor who during his tenure would issue decrees and the king would fulfill them. He would redeem who he wanted and imprison whom he wanted. And when he was replaced and another was appointed in his stead, he began asking the gatekeeper to enter, but the gatekeeper wouldn't let him. 
So Moshe, all the days of his tenure, he would imprison whom he wanted, as it is stated. And then this, this statement, this quotation is from the rebellion of Korach, okay? where, where it says, they, all those rebel rousers, and everything that was theirs descended alive into the abyss. When he was replaced, Josh, and Joshua was appointed, um, he began saying to God, hey, let me go into the land, and God said, it's enough for you. Now, what's going on with this Midrash? The Midrash quotes this moment when Korach, right, that Moshe punishes Korach and his followers because Korach and his followers have challenged Moshe and Aaron's leadership, and when they do, what do they say to Moses and Aaron? Rav lachem. It's enough for you that you're Moses and Aaron, right? You have too much leadership. You're taking on too much for yourselves. And what does Moshe say back to them? Rav lachem, b'nei levi. You guys, it's enough for you. You're already Kohanim. You want to be the leaders of the people too? So when God says rav lach to Moshe, God is using a phrase that Moshe has, has heard used against him and his leadership, and that Moshe used in return against Korach and his followers. As Rabbi Kasher says, God's Rav Lach in our Parsha is a way of reminding Moses that those who have been given great privileges sometimes cannot help but seek even more. God is saying to Moses, be careful of the temptation that power breeds. Did Moses become so presumptuous that he thought that he could ask God for anything, even God to take back his own decree? It's hard to let go of power. In the last few weeks, we witnessed something pretty extraordinary a sitting president who had won enough primaries to be his party's nominee, withdraw candidacy. Whatever one's political leanings, we should not lose sight of the rarity of such a moment. The only other comparable example I could think of is Pope Benedict deciding to step down. We had, for the first time in 600 years, a Pope Emeritus. And even Pope Benedict said, I'm going to withdraw into a private life of prayer, but he couldn't totally resist. And during his time, he authored a few letters, still trying to make his voice be heard. It's hard for anyone to hear enough. Barbanel offers another possible interpretation, noting that Moses pleads to be Joshua's assistant or just one of the people after Joshua was appointed. Barbanel says, maybe God is saying to Moses, Rav Lach, but with a question mark. Rav Lach? Is because the word Rav doesn't just mean enough, it can also mean Rav, a rabbi and that God was saying, is it Joshua really going to be a rabbi for you? God may be saying to Moses, that's not going to work. The people won't accept Joshua's authority if you're around. I want to offer just a little additional interpretation that maybe God is saying to Moses, you need to have a better sense of your own ego. You are the humblest man in the world, but even you are not going to be able to be just one of the people under, Mo under Joshua's leadership. In the end, I like to hear God's voice saying Rav Lach to Moshe less as a rebuke and more lovingly. Thank you, my friend. I'm grateful for everything that you did for the Jewish people, for the leader that you are, the person that you are, the way that you carried the people and helped me to become a God for them. But it's okay. You've done enough. You can let go. 
the people are going to be okay without you. One other meaning of Rav Lach. That phrase may be most familiar to you from a prayer that we say every Friday night, Lecha Dodi. You may remember the stanza, Rav Lach Shevek Bi'emek Kabacha Buhu Yachamol Alai Chemla. It means you, the Jewish people, you've dwelled in the Valley of Tears for long enough. May God's compassion wash over you. Some of you may have seen that on social media yesterday, Jennifer and I were invited to a speech by Vice President Harris. I shook her hand on the way in and Jennifer shook her hand as she left and as she was walking away I called out to her and uh, I pointed to the yellow ribbon that I was wearing and I said I'm I'm Keith Siegel I'm the rabbi of Keith Siegel's mom and um, Kamala turned around she immediately knew Keith's name and, uh, and she said, and I said to her, please remember the hostages. Please do everything you can to bring them home. And she said, she said, we're, we're doing everything we can, and we got a little bit of news today that gives us some hope. There are negotiations taking place as we speak, hoping to end the war, to bring the hostages home, hoping to avert more bloodshed, and bring an end to this terrible time of hatred and destruction. Ravlach, Shevet Be'eme Kabachal. It's long enough that we've dwelled in the Valley of Tears. That too is a meaning of Ravlach that I carry with me this Shabbat. May it be so. Amen. Amen.